Hey everybody, welcome back to Sweatpants BI. It's me, Sean, here. If you have been building Power BI reports and publishing them to the online environment for any amount of time uh, to any number of users, you know that one of the most annoying things that we deal with is our users constantly coming back to us, you know, wanting, uh, you know, can you show me this visual or can you show me this visual, but with these fields or with this measure or, hey, could I do this or how do I get to this? You know, obviously, you know, uh, as uh, Power BI developers, we need to be very customer service oriented uh, and we need to be doing everything that we can to help our business users and customers get the answers that they need. But there's only so many hours in the day and there's only so much time that we can dedicate to revisiting and revising old tools because chances are, uh, as our users continue to have questions about the data and the reports that we have published, we've already moved on to new projects. So going back and having to rework old tools can be a huge time suck for us, right? You know, um, so what, what if we could just develop an environment or a sandbox where our users could play with you know the data sets and the and the uh, measures that we're publishing without having to come to us every single time. Now, about a year ago, I would have said that sounds like a nightmare. The last thing that I want is for my users to be able to see all of the tables and transformations and measures that I've created in the background. You know, oftentimes some of the measures that I have going on behind the scenes, uh, some of them I spent hours working on. And even though I understand them, I would have a very difficult time articulating them to someone else, much less trusting my users to go and apply that measure, you know, possibly to the wrong table or the wrong combination of fields, you know, so that they're going to get unexpected results or they're going to say, you know, Sean, this, this measure is not doing, you know, what I need it to do. And to which my response might be, well, because you're not using the measure the way that it was intended to be used. But what if we could create a sandbox environment where we could lock down the report so that the user can only see you know, certain columns from our data model, they can only see certain measures that we would trust them to use, and we can completely lock out everything else. So if you are more savvy with Power BI, you're probably thinking, Sean, you're talking about you know, personalizing visuals. I know that that's a toggle that we can turn on in Power BI Desktop. But you know how how do you uh, selectively choose you know what aspects of our data model and which measures users can actually see? Well, that's the magic. And I'll be honest, a couple of months ago, I didn't know about this. Uh, someone on my team uh, in my day job actually brought this idea to me. I thought that it was brilliant. Since then, I've been using it on almost every Power BI tool that I develop as a means of setting up sandboxes for my users to play in without me having to worry that they're going to, you know, uh, use a measure in the wrong context, that they're going to use, you know, um, uh, tables or fields from my data model that really are, you know, kind of messy or sloppy or that aren't intended for front end purposes. Now I don't have to worry about that. I can manually set which measures and which columns the user is using at all times to sort of keep them safe and encourage them to play. This has been especially useful to me on uh, you know my first drafts of reports where maybe I have ideas of what's important, but the user, you know, or uh, my stakeholders, until they see the data, they kind of don't know what they want or they kind of don't know what's valuable. This technique has been invaluable for first drafts of reports where I can sort of throw up some visuals uh, or you know some ideas that I have as far as like this is what could be important for this report. But I also created a sandbox for you where you can go and experiment and try to figure out things since you know the business so much better than I do. You can try to go and find some things that might be really useful and really cool for this report. So really, it is just you know taking the level of collaboration between me and my business customers to the next level. So obviously that sounds amazing. How do we do it? Let's go ahead and jump into Power BI in one of my old reports that has a lot of garbage kind of happening behind the scenes. And let's figure out how to turn that into a really clean sandbox. So for this sandbox demonstration, I'm actually going to use my Maven World Cup Challenge submission. The reason being is that when I was actually building my Maven World Cup entry, you know, I built this, you know, really uh, elaborate design uh, based on the data that was provided for that competition. But if I'm being honest, I also rushed through a bunch of different parts of this report. I ended up with a whole bunch of tables over here on the right that I ended up not even using. 
in my actual report. If you open up my measures table here, there are all kinds of measures that I left in here behind the scenes that I ended up not even actually using in the report proper. So basically, while I'm proud of the report that I ended up submitting for the competition, I ended up with a lot of, uh, I hesitate to say garbage, but definitely some leftover resources over here on the right that I would not want a user to see if I gave them a sandbox environment. You know, I, there, there were a whole bunch of things over here that uh, some of these measures are either unvalidated or they're unfinished, things that I would definitely not want a user to play with in a sandbox environment, which is why this is the perfect report to use, in as, use as an example for how to create a sandbox in Power BI. Because chances are, when you are building your own Power BI tools, you're going to end up in similar situations with your company, where maybe behind the scenes there are tables that you ended up not using or tables that you had to create for BI development purposes that wouldn't necessarily be meaningful to users. And you might end up with measures that you just created for experimentation's sake. You know, maybe you didn't have time to go back and delete them, you know, or maybe they are serving an important purpose in your report, but they're way too complicated to trust a user with like without you kind of sitting next to them or uh, helping them navigate uh, the nuances of, the, of that measure. So what we want to do is we want to create a sandbox that just cherry picks some of the simplest aspects of this report. Really, there are only about six measures out of all of these that I would want a hypothetical sandbox user of this Maven World Cup data to use. And there's only one table in this and out of all of these uh, different tables that you see in my model that I would want a user to be able to play with. Everything else here, uh, I could have either hidden or deleted, honestly, because I ended up consolidating all of the World Cup matches in this data set and all of the matches, period, into my own custom table called All Matches that already contains all of the games that were provided. So some of these tables are completely redundant or they're just there for reference sake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sandbox environment where the user can only access one table and they can only access six measures to play with. A pretty lean sandbox, but that's for their own benefit. I don't want the user getting hung up on things uh, that are either over their head or that I never intended for them to experiment or play with. So before we create our sandbox, there's something very important in Power BI that we need to turn on. If you just click on your page or if you create a new page and if you go to your settings, you should see a personalized visuals uh, tab or um, option here in your settings. And you can see that I currently do not have that option. And if you don't, then I thought that it would be helpful for you if I showed you how to turn that on because we're going to have to have we're going to have to go into our Power BI settings and enable this option. So we're just going to go to file and I'm going to go to my options and settings, go to options. And once I have my pop up here, I'm going to go to my current file, click on report settings. And I'm going to scroll down to one of the last four options, and that is personalized visuals, which is going to allow report readers to personalize visuals to suit their needs. So let's go ahead and turn that option on. And Power BI is going to think for a second, and then immediately I'm going to see a new option here called Personalized Visual. It turns on, and when I open this up, you can see that there's you know something fairly weird here that you know may not mean a whole lot to you if you're brand new to personalizing visuals. It says Report Reader Perspective. And if you drop this down, it says Default Fields or Model. And you might be scratching your head. What, is, what does all this mean? You know, what are these two options? Well, don't worry about it. I'm going to explain it to you here in just a moment. And if you're like me, the first time that someone showed me this, it blew my mind. So let's just forget about this for now. The important thing is that personalized visuals is now turned on. So let's go ahead and just drop a new visual into our sandbox here. And I'm just going to grab, you know, something from all matches. I'm going to grab um, my home team field, which contains all of my different countries in the data set. And I'm going to grab uh, one of my most simple measures in the entire uh, measure table. And that is wins, which literally just counts the total number of uh, rows in the data set. And uh, I'm looking just for matches where the result was wins. So effectively, I get a count of all wins 
uh, among all games that I have data for, for all of these teams. So, and I can sort that so that we can see, you know, who the most powerful uh, or winningest teams are uh, historically in the data. And no surprise, we're seeing teams like Brazil, England, Germany, Argentina at the top of the pack. So uh, the option here that we have enabled is right here. This visual can be personalized by report readers. Now, the real problem here is notice I'm clicking on it in Power BI Desktop and not a thing is happening. So what is going on? The first thing that we're going to do here, just to kind of show you how personalized visuals works, is I am just going to save my Maven World Cup sandbox report real quickly. And I'm just going to close out of it for now. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my Power BI online workspace. This is my personal workspace. I'm going to go to new data set and I'm just going to go ahead and search for that file that I created. It's a local file. Let's go ahead and grab sweatpants BI. Uh, let's see, creating a sandbox. And here's my Maven World Cup sandbox report that I just saved a moment ago. Let's go ahead and import that sandbox report and wait for that to finish. And once it's done, I can scroll down here, see my Maven World Cup sandbox report. Let's go ahead and open it up. I'm going to hover on that table that I created and notice that right away a pop-up comes up for personalize this visual and invites me to try it. So that's exactly what I want to do. And notice now when I click on it, I actually get some uh, functionality, whereas, again, nothing at all was happening when I was clicking this button in Power BI Desktop. That's because this is an online feature that your users are meant to play with. So, it, you know, right now it's immediately telling me I'm using a, a visual, visualization type of table, obviously, and the columns that I'm using are home team and wins. And if I, you know, go to any of these and click on the options, you know, I can basically see my entire data model behind the scenes which is great. Uh, I have uh, the option to add any measures uh, from my data set uh, as a feature to this uh, tool. In fact, let's go ahead and just um, add, I should have a measure called losses. Let's go ahead and add that to the table. And you can see now all of my losses are coming up. And let's go ahead and add, uh, just to sort of uh, complete the theme, let's go ahead and add all of my draws to the table as well. So now I've got a table here that if you remember when I created it in Power BI Desktop, it was just the home teams and the wins. But now in my new sandbox environment, I can start adding other elements from my data. And if I'm a, if I'm a user of this report, I can do exactly the same thing. Or if uh, I want to just go through here and remove the fields that I added, and if I want to change this from a table into a bar chart, that's also something that I can now easily do. Um, so you, you can see also as Power BI is sort of walking me through this, that if I'm a user and I'm using the sandbox and I create something that I really like, I also have the option at all times to add a bookmark to save, uh, you know, maybe the uh, awesome visual that I created if I think I want to return to it later. So you can see the, you know, basically by enabling personalized, personalizable visuals, we've already created a rudimentary sandbox. Easy, right? Now, the main thing that we need to do is we need to figure out a way to sort of lock this down to protect our users and keep them from accessing any tables or columns or measures that we would rather that they not play with. You know, we want to keep the sandbox as simple as possible. And so this is where we are going to actually open back up our um, Power BI desktop report. And we're going to revisit the option on the personalized visuals settings uh, about perspectives. And just to remind you what that is, I'm going to drop down my personalized visual options and I'm talking about the report reader perspective. And so literally, if you read this report reader perspective, what we're talking about are the different perspectives that someone who is reading the, por or the report, not the developer, your users, we're trying to, to toggle what they are going to see. And in, or, and, and in order to set restrictions on what from our data model the user is able to see, we're going to have to use a third-party tool that is uh, heavily integrated with Power BI called the Tabular Editor. And so I'm going to go ahead and on my other screen, 
open up my tabular editor and I'm just going to go ahead and drag my tabular editor uh, onto on top of my Power BI report. You can see that I'm currently using just a 30 day trial. Um, I'm, I'm blessed in that my company, uh, my current employer does actually have tabular editor licenses. So I do use this a lot in my day job. I don't actually use this on my personal computer very often. So I'm using the trial and uh, hopefully you have means of getting access to this amazing uh, tool as well, because it, it can really, really help uh, speed up a lot of functionality with your Power BI data model, but in order to connect Tabular Editor to the Power BI Desktop tool that we have open, we just want to open Tabular Editor and a Power BI Desktop report at the same time. And then we're going to click on this Open Model from DB option. A bunch of, if you're newer to Power BI, honestly, a bunch of like, uh, you know, pretty confusing technical and intimidating looking things are going to pop up but it's okay. We don't have to like have this server username password. We don't have to have any of these settings because if we click on local instance, our Power BI desktop report is already there waiting for us to click on it. So we're just going to click on Maven World Cup Sandbox, hit OK, and immediately you can see that all of our data model from the Power BI desktop report has loaded. Everything is here waiting for us. All of our measures are here. Let me just go ahead and give this a little bit more room for you to see it. And all of our tables are here. And notice in these options up here at the top is perspectives. That's not a coincidence. That is actually exactly what we're talking about in the perspectives of the personalized visual settings. So let's go ahead and open back up our tabular editor and I'm gonna to go to perspectives and I'm just going to right click and I'm gonna create a new perspective that I'm going to call Maven World Cup Challenge. Actually, scratch that. I'm just going to call this Maven World Cup Sandbox. Now I'm going to go back down to my table and I'm going to grab the measures that I know I want the users to see. In this case, I definitely want to grab game count. I want to grab my draws. I want to grab my losses. I want to grab my wins. And I want to want to grab my goals scored and goals conceded. And I should have, let me just make sure, one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. I've got all of the, the measures that I wanted to bring over. I'm going to click on shown in perspectives. I'm going to add those to my Maven World Cup sandbox. And next, I'm going to grab my all matches table, which is the only table that I want my users to be able to play with. And I'm going to add that to shown in perspectives, Maven World Cup Sandbox. And um, once I am done, I'm just going to save these changes back to the currently connected database. Next, I'm going to need to close out of Power BI Desktop I'm going to want to make sure that I still have my tabular editor open with my Maven World Cup Sandbox uh, perspective created. And I'm going to reopen my Maven World Cup Sandbox report. I'm going to go over to my uh, settings on the page and I'm going to go down to report reader perspectives. And I'm going to make sure that my Maven World Cup Sandbox perspective is now showing up. It is. And I'm going to uh, select that and enable it. I'm going to go over to my sandbox page that I went ahead and just, you know, set up with a quick layout. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have personalized visuals turned on. Select Maven World Cup Sandbox. I no longer need page one. This is the page that I intended to actually build my sandbox. And on my actual uh, World Cup report, I'm going to want to make sure that personalized visuals is turned off because you can see that right now by enabling personalized visuals, it's currently on for the whole report. And that means that currently my entire Power BI report is a sandbox. Like anybody could come in here and click on personalized visuals after I uh, publish this report. So I don't want that. I definitely do not want my users, uh, you know, messing with everything that's in the report. I want them to be able to play in the, on the pages where I intend for them to play with the report. So on this first, you know, report page, I want to turn off personalized visuals so that there are options to personalize the, the, uh, the uh, other things that are going on in this page disappear. 
and only on the sandbox can they actually, uh, you know, start playing with the visuals. You know, if you want to go in here just real quickly and, uh, you know, throw something up, uh, let's go ahead and recreate our table that we created when we published the first time with all of our home teams. And let's go ahead and add draws, losses, and wins to the, to the table. And let's go ahead and republish this report so that we can see what difference uh, creating perspectives has made. I'm going to go back to my workspace and I am going to just very quickly overwrite my Maven World Cup sandbox report. And once that's done, I'm going to open up my report. There's my sandbox. And now as I click on personalize this visual, you'll notice they can create any kind of visual that they want. But when we go to, you know, add something, you can see that now instead of all of our data model being exposed to the sandbox, only our all matches table is something that the user can play with. And if they drop down their measures, instead of seeing 30 or 40 measures like we know that I have in the Power BI desktop report, they are restricted to only seeing the measures that we intended for them to play with. So if we want to, we can go in here and we can add, you know, game count. We can go in here and we can add uh, goals scored and goals conceded. But that is literally all that we can do. And you can see that the user cannot necessarily, you know, really play as much with the formatting. They can't like resize this visual but at least they can add any, any of the measures that they want to um, and anything that they want from that all matches table in order to, you know, play a little bit with the data. And it allows you to give your users, you know, the opportunity to, to you know, play with, with the most important parts of the data so that they don't have to constantly come to you asking, hey, can you make this, you know, subtle change to this visual? Or can you create a really easy visual that does X, Y, or Z? You know, you can just create an environment where you have very explicit guardrails to protect the user while they play with the data. It's going to keep them from coming back to you for fairly basic rework. It's going to free up time on your calendar, and it's going to create a more interactive an immersive experience for all of your users that are going to make them think it, that you are amazing and that Power BI is the greatest tool ever. And the great thing is, even though you're creating these guardrails where they can only access certain tables and certain measures, it's super, super easy to go back into Tabular Editor later and add new measures to the perspectives if your users are like, hey, you know, it'd be really nice if I had the ability to use this measure or this field from the data. And you say, no problem. I can go in, I can add that for you um, in, the, in the tabular editor, and I'll have that online in just a couple of minutes. It streamlines the entire process while also giving your users a really fun area where they can feel like they're getting their hands dirty with Power BI and data visualization and that you're not having all the fun. So thanks for checking this out. In part two of this video, I'm just going to show you some ideas for actually creating your sandbox page just some literally just some design ideas that I've used in the past for creating really cool and fun sandboxes that are going to help, you know, your users cover as many of their bases as possible. So thanks for checking this out. I will see you in part two.